Greetings, y'all. Welcome to Unimpressed, a solo Arkham, car the hard game with uh, Preston is involved. Anyway, this is part seven in a series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the other ones. Today I'm playing Black Stars Rise. So if you haven't played that scenario, here's your spoiler alert. I'm playing it. We're going to, let's take a look at the deck here. I'm playing solo Preston like I talked about. Um, made a couple changes from last time. Uh, excuse me. Mainly, I um, I had fine clothes is kind of a tech card for the last scenario. I switched those back to lone wolves. I'm finding that I have a lot of two cost events and combos that I'm trying to pull off, and lone wolf means that I'm basically getting six resources around instead of five. That even number turns out is pretty relevant. Uh, this map is also really huge, so I added another copy of Elusive, and I upgraded my, um, what are they called, sneak attacks into close calls, which I think is actually going to be a really good solo card. Um, I have been kind of wishing that I had a little bit more time to set up and get my dig deeps down, so I'm upgrading those into moxies, uh, which is going to give them fast, and I can play them sort of as a reaction then to, uh, you know, if I draw some kind of nasty encounter effect or whatever. So anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on uh, the deck, so let's get back into the game. Uh, switch that over. Um, cool. We're playing Black Stars Rise. There's a couple of uh, setup things I have to do. Mostly there's some random locations that I got to... Um, choose put into play here uh, that's all good that's all good that's all good um, oh yeah here's the, here's the cards that I'm swapping out so I upgraded my sneak attacks into close calls um, I changed my fine clothes back into lone wolves I upgraded my dig deeps into moxies uh, which boosts the same stats. And then I took out the other look what I found because I basically never play it. There's just not enough two clue locations at this point, and Lola is just so good that I can find ways to play around it without needing a two clue card to do it. Uh, and then I also exiled the flare last time, but I'm going to keep my deck up at two flares. I find the consistency that I'm getting from those flares is very good. So I'm enjoying that. That's a, a lot of fun. Anything exciting going on here with the uh, campaign log before we get started here? Um, well, we know where the gate at. Uh, let me see if I can... No. All right, well, whatever. Um, I did not interview Ashley, which would be relevant for this scenario. Um, I did gain some Chasing the Stranger bucks from last time. So, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. I got seven experience last time. Um, so we'll see how we do right now. Uh, let's shuffle this deck up really good and draw our opening hand. Yes, started with the Lolas. I love, I love seeing those Lolas, though. Um, against all odds, I don't need... I don't need the second Lola for sure, and I don't need an Elusive yet. I am going to keep the Fire Axe. Uh, so let's draw three more cards. Uh, one of those is a weakness. So that looks like it's my opening hand. I got a moxie kind of early, which is cool. Uh, I always love excuses to use composures because they are very good in theory, and so I like seeing them uh, sort of in practice to see when is the best time to use them. I think they're a little bit more situational than something like uh, Streetwise. That's a permanent that is just always available to you. So, all right, let's take a look at the map. Where are we at today? Uh, we start at the Port de Lavance. And I didn't say that correctly because French is dumb. I'm uh, going to spend some money getting that clue first. If you recall, this is the scenario that has two agenda decks. And yeah, they both have five Doom, so you know what? Two agenda decks means I gotta keep track of Doom in two different places. Oops, that's not what I want. What are you doing? Um so 
they each have an ability that rewards me for adding doom to them uh, if we look at the campaign log I actually have a lot of conviction still and you know if I had my choice I'd probably do a the doubt route anyway so I'm gonna play this scenario using the doubt or um, leaning into the doubt side of things which just means that I am going to spread out how I'm, I'm placing doom on these act and agendas because again there's no objective out there um, only when you replay the scenario do you realize the benefit of possibly trying to put all the doom on one of these two agendas uh, and that benefit is mostly to get more conviction uh, so I'm gonna spread it out because I want doubt oh look at that that was cute you guys ready ready for some fun first action boom Lola uh, at least I'm going to use inheritance money, so that leaves one resource on family inheritance. Um, let's go ahead and um, now I could exhaust Lola to pick up this clue. I kind of want to get my rabbit's foot down as soon as possible because I'm probably going to. Uh, there's a lot of uh, testing treacheries in this deck, and I'm probably going to lose a lot of those. Um, tests early on so I want to make sure I get my rabbit's foot down to maximize how much draw I'm getting off of that uh, and then I'm left with one action left I could go down to two resources but honestly I think while I'm getting set up it's nice to have actual resources in my resource pool so my last action I'm just gonna play a fire axe to get ready for any enemies and not use Lola yet um, and seeing as I'm not using Lola yet let me back that up. What if my first action is Rabbit's Foot, my second action is Fire Axe? Uh, let's say I use only resources off the Inheritance. I'm kind of reworking my turn here. So first action, Rabbit's Foot. Second action, Fire Axe. Spending two resources off my Inheritance. I'm not using Lola yet, so I didn't need to put her down. Uh, last action, I'm actually going to use the Family Inheritance action to move all resources. Gain these two resources to my actual resource pool. Uh, and I'm fine with that. I found in uh, testing that I felt a little bit poor right at the beginning, and so I'm trying to kind of set myself up for success in that regard. So anyway, uh, I gained those two resources. Uh, end of the round, there's no enemies, so I draw a card, gain a resource. We go up to the top, and I'm going to put this first doom... Um, I'm going to put this first doom on the Agenda 1C, uh, which is the Abbey side. And I'm going to draw, oops, you know what? I don't think I shuffled this encounter deck. Now that I think about it. So we will make sure that that's all nice and shuffled. All right, here we go. Mysterious Chanting. If there's no cultist enemies in play, there's not. So I'm going to search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw that enemy. I can do that. Easy peasy. Here's an Acolyte. Um, who gets a Doom on him. And he spawns at any empty location. So uh, I'm going to want to kill this guy sooner than later, so I'm just going to put him with a location next to mine. That seems fine. Okay. Now, starting my turn, I get my Inheritance money. And um, first action, we're going to play that Lola for three. One, two, three. Let's go ahead and exhaust her for one, two, three. And gain a resource off of the port. Uh, that's only one action. So second action, let's go ahead and move on up to the Grand Rue. Um, there's a clue here, so I'm not going to want to leave until I can get it with Lola. Uh, also... I engage this Acolyte. So last action, let's go ahead and kill the Acolyte. Um, he's a three combat, and I'm starting at a one combat. Let's take a look at the uh, Chaos Bag here. Uh, tablets are redraws. Skulls are minus the amount of Doom in play, or the highest amount of Doom on an agenda in play, which right now is uh, one. So... Uh, honestly, like one or two up on this test seems probably fine. Um, I could use a rise to the occasion to save some money. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, that seems fine. Uh, I guess I could save Rise of the Vacation for something else, maybe, but um, I'm going to hold on to those resources for a little bit. Uh, so let's commit Rise. I got one... Mm, I don't know. The the resource spent on Fire Axe is pretty good. I'll just use the Fire Axe money. That's fine. So I'm at one, uh, two, three, four, five with Fire Axe. Uh, five on three, like I said, is statistically pretty good. So let's do it. Zero. Boom. Gets rid of the Acolyte. Uh, end of the round. No enemies. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Go up to the top. Single Doom. Again, I'm going to spread out this Doom across these... Uh, agendas here because I'm not trying to do like the weird conviction thing. Spires of Carcosa. This is a real wrench in the gears, huh? Uh, let's see. There's an investigate action to get rid of the doom that comes up with this card, but good news. This is a really good um, location for this because I can use my... Uh, it's, a, it's a shroud of one is what I'm getting at. Um, and honestly, I'm investigating at a two-on-one right now, which is very reasonable, I think. Um, so let's try to get rid of these spires here. Uh, I know it's confusing with two agendas, but if there's doom in play, they actually count towards each agenda. Or both agendas, I guess. Um, Alright, so uh, first action, I'm going to investigate Excuse me, uh, on the spire of of Carcosa, I'm at a one, two, three, four, five with streetwise resources. Five on one, skulls are minus one. So we're gonna get rid of a doom. Um, second action, I could do the same thing. I could just test two on one. That puts me at about a 50% chance, and then I could use rabbit's foot to draw. Um, but I don't feel like I need to be really cheap here. So we're going to do the same test again. One, two, three, four, five on one. Minus one. Good enough. Gets rid of the other Doom. Spires gets discarded once you remove all the Doom from it. Um, I'm going to exhaust Lola and spend a resource to pick up this clue here. And I get one more action. Excuse me. So let's, uh, let's head on up to the outer wall. Uh, let's flip it. It's got two clues, two shroud. After one or more doom is placed on the A agenda deck, you take a damage. Um, well, well, all right. End of the round, no enemies. Draw, resource, up to the top. It said A agenda. If I put the doom on the A agenda, I take a damage. So for now, I'm going to put it on the B agenda, or the C, I guess. What is this? C agenda. Correct. I know my ABCs. Crashing Flood. Okay, here's a question. Uh, I would take a damage and lose an action, which isn't awesome. Uh, my shroud here is two. Um, I don't know. There's a couple ways I could do it. I don't think... I'm a little bit... I mean, like, the one damage doesn't really matter. I'm just afraid if I... Uh, you know, I don't want it to come back and bite me later. Um, but honestly, losing a damage in an action is not that bad. So, I'm just going to take this one on the chin. I'm at a one, two. Um, I got this extra elusive here, but I, I'm not really expecting to beat this either. Uh, so, yeah, I am at a two on three. Yeah, I don't want to commit cards if I'm kind of sort of planning on losing it. You know what I mean? Uh, zero. Well, look at that. Uh, so I do fail. I'm going to lose an action and take a damage. Uh, Rabbit's Foot exhausts, gives me a card draw. Uh, and that's back to the investigation phase. So before I do anything, I'm definitely going to exhaust Lola, spend two resources off my inheritance, uh, these two here, to gain this first clue. Um, my first action is going to be to investigate with Streetwise. Same old, same old. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody, we're going to make the same joke again. I'm a five on two. 
minus three is enough to succeed. So I get the experience point, which I love. Um, hooray for me. And then second action, we're going to just keep on marching around here. We're going to hit up the north tower. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, after one or more doom is placed on the C agenda deck, I would take a horror. All right, well, I guess I won't be doing that, will I? Where the, there it is. It was, it was hiding from me. I don't know what was going on with that. Uh, anyway, uh, end of the round, no enemies, draw a card, gain a resource. Here we go again. Uh, it said that I take horror if I go to the C agenda, so we're gonna go to the A agenda, which is pretty much what I wanted to do anyway. <gasps> the Wizard of the Oda. Any empty location, and he's gonna s gain a doom right away. That's no fun. Um, so now each of these agendas are basically at three. So I gotta get rid of this guy in the next round or two. Um, let me take a look at what I've got here. Um, I've got a lot of resources that I gotta get rid of with f um, fire axe or something to kill this thing. <laughs> um, I think if I use against all odds when I fight this thing, I should be pretty good. And this guy's a four to hit, I think. Yeah. All right, all right. So before I do anything, uh, we're going to exhaust Lola and spend two of my actual resources because i got to get my, my fire axe online. Um, to gain a clue. Um, first action I'm going to investigate with Streetwise. One, two, three, four, five. Minus three. That's perfect. I get this other clue. Second action, let's move in with the Wizard of the Order. Um, let me think about this for a second. Um, what's going to happen? Uh, I'm trying to think of the things that can happen when I move into the Broken Steps because there's two different copies of this and they're both bad. Uh, I'm just going to go in and see what happens. So second action, I move into the Broken Steps. After you enter, you must either discard an asset you control or draw the topmost cultist enemy in the encounter discard pile. Um, I could discard a Lola because I have one in hand, which I guess would be okay. Rabbit's Foot is not super crucial but I like having it uh, and I think I'm gonna be fine with the doom count if I draw the cultist that I already defeated and he spawns at an empty location and I'm gonna keep spawning him in front of me so I don't have to backtrack to get these guys alright so that was second action I moved into the broken steps and the wizard of the order automatically engages me and last action we're going to fire axe. So I'm going to spend two resources for sure on the fire axe, uh, which is going to put me at one, two, three, four, five on four. Uh, I'd like that to be a little bit better. So let's spend one of these inheritance bucks. Uh, so that puts me at seven on four. Oops. Sorry, wrong button. Um, let's take a look at the bag. We're at two doom all around, so these skulls are at minus two. And I would be at a seven on four, which puts me here. Statistically, it looks real swell. So let's do it. I'm a three up. Boom. Uh, zero resources in my credit pool, so that's enough to kill the Wizard of the Order. Fire Axe does its extra damage. And there you have it. End of the round. Everything resets. Draw. Resource. I'm at eight cards in hand. Go up to the top. Oops. Um, let's add Doom over here because uh, I don't think it matters. Um, bump these skulls up. And then um, my encounter card is Worlds Merge. This might be a take heart. Yeah, it's looking like it. All right. Um, I have two options here. First of all, it's a willpower three test. I'm currently a willpower one. Uh, if agenda one C is in play, it is. 
Take one horror and discard one card from your hand. So I could discard the second elusive or the Lola. Alternatively, I could play the Moxie or, or something like that. But remember, I only have the one resource in my resource pool right now, and I actually don't get my family inheritance money until the start of the turn. And we're talking about just taking one horror, and it's going to go on Lola anyway. So, you know, we're going to take heart is what we're going to do. Cool. So I'm a one on three. Skulls minus three, I think. Uh, so take heart triggers. I draw um, two cards and gain two resources, which is going to go on the inheritance. Um, I drew the man in the pallid mask. Let me deal with him real quick. He has to spawn at the location furthest from me, which unfortunately is back here at the beginning. But I got it some elusives, so I might still be able to, to get him. Um, a little bit later maybe in the scenario uh, and then I take my one horror which is going to go on Lola thank you Lola you are so supportive you were just really good uh, and then I have to discard a card from my hand which is going to be the extra Lola because I talked about how I want these elusives for the man in the pallet mask okay start of the investigation phase where are we at what's going on uh, you can better believe it we're going to make our way into the Abbey Church I could backtrack right now to go get the man in the pallet mask, but every time you enter the broken steps, you have to uh, trigger this forced ability, which is nasty. Uh, so I would rather get Abbey Church revealed so that I have a place to elusive back to. Uh, that's not the broken steps. All right, so first action, we're going to move into the Abbey Church. Uh, as an additional cost to enter, I have to spend three clues, which I will do. One, two, three. I don't know how I got so many clues. Oh, yeah, because uh, I got the locations that I had a bunch of clues on. That's right. Uh, the Acolyte automatically engages me. Let's see what else is going on. When we flip the church, um, it says bring in a bunch of locations. So give me a second to do that. You can fast forward five or ten seconds while I do that. Um... Oops. Nope. There it is. That's the thing I'm looking for. All right. Um, uh, let's see. We got a cloister, knights halls, this thing, and then. Oh, you know what? I forgot to um, finish the setup here. So um, let's remember that you have to choose one of two essentially stacks of. Um, cards depending on well it's, you choose them randomly uh, let's see Knights Hall Cloisters that's right this one's going to go down here the Abbey Tower goes up here let's do this oops there's two of these um, so yeah I just had to choose that uh, randomly and then this is what our, uh, our map now looks like so let's uh, throw in some uh, location love here. Let's do this. It's got to go here. This. Um, let's drop this down. And drop this down. Boom. I got myself some map. Oops, this isn't supposed to be here. All right. Cool. Uh, so first action I moved in there. Uh, but now I got to deal with this uh, acolyte guy, and I'm gonna kill him. I'm sure that does not come as a surprise. I think I got some take heart money this round, which is cool. Uh, so second action, let's get the acolyte. How high up do I need to be on this test? Oops. Um, I think. Yep. Still, I still want to be three up. So I want to get to a at least a six. So. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I do have a coup de grace in hand. No, I'll just kill this guy with the fire axe. It's fine. Because what else am I going to be doing on my turn, right? All right, so let's go one. Oops. Wrong button. One, two, three, four, five. I said at least six. Six, seven with the fire axe. Uh, seven minus three is enough to do it. 
cool, 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 cool. Seven minus three. Um, that was my second action, and then last action, hero. I think I'm gonna. Uh, oh, f first I gotta exhaust Lola, and ooh, hold on. Let me take a look at this. If there are two agendas in play with different agenda numbers, Abby Church gets three shroud, or, or plus two shroud. Uh, there are two different agenda numbers. So I'm going to actually do this move here. I'm going to spend a clue. Go to the top. I'm going to use this ability here uh, to place one Doom on this agenda. And I'm going to gain two resources. This is a card ability, so this is going to go on to my inheritance. Okay. So, I'm still two, two actions in. Let's exhaust Lola. I'm going to spend three of those resources now that the Abbey Church is back down to a three shroud. I'm going to get this, this clue right here. Um... And then I could spend my last action just gaining these two resources. I talked about how, you know, I kind of don't want to get too low on resources. I've got lots of two-cost events and things here. Um, I think that's probably good. Something else I could do is possibly play Moxie to use up one of these resources. Um, but the problem with that is I don't have Peter down, so I don't have like a way to soak sanity. So I think that's the, probably the best way to use these resources. Last action, I'm going to click Family Inheritance um, and gain two resources to my resource pool. Cool. Uh, none of the enemies are doing anything, so end of the round. Refresh. Draw a card, gain a resource. Um, I'm going to clear out some of these excess resources right now. And we go up to the top. Let's hit up this agenda here. And we're going to draw marked by the sign. This is obnoxious. Uh, test two willpower. Hmm. Or I will take two horror. It's not the end of the world. Um, I could throw down, uh, what's it called? Moxie right now so I could throw my money into it. That would cost me one to play Moxie. I love that he has this little dog here in the Moxie art. How cute is that? Uh, and then I would have three th resources left over. So that would pump into Moxie, and it would bring me up to a four willpower. This that would put me at four on four. I could commit this rise to the occasion to be six on four, and that would all be to avoid two horror. I don't know. That's pretty expensive. I think I'm just gonna take it on the chin. I'll take my rabbit's foot draw, and I'll save this money for setting up. Uh, Dark Horse and uh, maybe Peter if I draw him or something. All right, so let's uh, let's do it. I'm testing a one on four minus one. So I fail. I'm going to take two direct horror. Uh, I get to exhaust Rabbit's Foot to give me a draw. It's just a coup de gras. And then start of my turn, I get all mamoni. All right, let's do this thing. Uh, first, let's move into the... Cluster. Let's see what we got. Two Shroud. If there's no clues, I can test Willpower 3. If I succeed, remember that I found a guide. Um, when I'm playing the Doubt Route, I usually... Usually, I haven't really played it that much. I, I think it's best for me to go to both the Cloister and the Knight's Hall, pick up both of these objectives, and then from here on out, I can just move to wherever I need to go to. So... Um, yeah, that's my that's my thinking. Uh, all right, so first action, I move into the cloister. Uh, let's go ahead and exhaust Lola and spend some inheritance money to pick up the clue here. Um, then let's take a look at what's going on. Second action, I'm probably going to take this parlay test if I can, but I'm going to need to throw some stuff into it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's uh, let's get Dark Horse down and start this party off. Um, I'm gonna use two bucks off my inheritance and one resource to pay for Dark Horse. 
And then uh, third action, let's uh, let's do this parlay test. Uh, I am going to throw down a moxie for one. It's fast, so it doesn't cost me an action. And then I'm going to pump two resources into moxie. So for willpower, I'm at one. Dark horse kicks in two. Uh, three, four with moxie. I'm a four on three, and I will commit a rise to the occasion to be eight on three. If you're wondering why I want to be four up, it's because I've got four doom here. So my chaos bag looks a little something like this. Look at that four up. I'm going to be fine. Everything's great and perfect. And look, I did it. I drew zero. Yay. Okay. So I have found a guy. Let's put a little marker here. Um, cool. Cool. So uh, let's see, move, dark horse, and parlay was my turn. End of the round, enemies are not doing anything, so we're gonna draw. We're gonna gain a resource. Go to the top of the round. Go up to four dune, the bases are loaded. And we got a swift, Byaki, uh, which is a hunter. I don't really wanna deal with this. It doesn't look particularly friendly. Um, I could kill it in two hits with a fire axe potentially, but um, it's probably more action efficient if I lean into this close call that I have because he's a, a, a hunter. I don't want to just evade him. Um, I mean, I guess I could use coup de gras on this guy. I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to evade him first to try to use close call. And if it doesn't work, I'll kill him with fire axe and then, or I'll try to kill him with fire axe, I should say. All right, so I'm evading. One, two, three, four, five. And you know what? Let's rearrange some money here. I'm going to spend one of my real resources. So one, two, three, four, five, six on two. Oh, look at that. Four up. That's exactly what I want. Elder sign. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, let's get rid of this guy. I'm going to play Close Call, which costs me two resources off my inheritance. I'm going to shuffle this enemy back into the encounter deck. So I don't have to deal with him no more. Let's do it. Um, oops. There you go. That gets discarded. Um, second action. Let's, uh, let's move over here to the Knight's Hall. And... Um, Let's see, how, how much, how am I doing on money? I'm pretty broke right now. I could regular investigate. I'll be at a three on two. It's not terrible, right? One, two, three. Ideally, I would be using Lola for this, but I'm down a resource. Uh, let's see, one, two, three on two. Is that where I'm at? Three on two. Let's take a look at the bag. Three on two puts me right here. So maybe not amazing. Uh, let's look at what the tablets do real quick. If I fail, if I drew a tablet and then drew another token, and I'm kind of likely to fail, I would place one doom on each agenda, but it doesn't force the agenda to advance. And I'm at bases loaded right now anyway. So I'm really not losing that much even if I fail. So I'm just going to take the test. I'm a... Uh, I guess I could commit something here. I could commit one of those elusives. I don't know. The Rise of the Occasion and the elusives are actually really nice. So, oh, I actually can't play Rise of the Occasion because it's only a shroud of two. It needs to be at least a shroud of three in order to be two higher than my base skill value of one. All right, enough thinking about it. We're doing it. Zero? I did it! Holy smokes! How neat is that? All right, so... um what was that? First action, I evaded. Second action, I moved. Third action, I investigated. Huh. How neat. Uh, I still got to do the other little uh, side questy thing there. but All right, end of the round. Uh, draw a card, gain a resource. Before I gain that resource, I've lost soul. Uh, if you have more conviction than doubt, test willpower X, where X is your intellect. My intellect right now is 3. One, two, three. My willpower is two. I'm going to take two damage if I fail this, and 
I don't think there's much I can do about it. I think I'm going to fail. I mean, I could commit the rise to the... No, I can't commit rise to the occasion, right? No, I could. Because the um, difficulty is 3, which is higher than my base skill value of 1 by 2. So I could commit rise to the occasion. I don't really feel like 2 damage is that much to fret about. So we're going to just take it. I lost. Lost hard, so I take uh, two damage, and I'm gonna exhaust that rabbit's foot, and then I gain my resource. Okie, a doki. I'm gonna go up to the top, and I'm forced to advance one of these. I'll just advance the Abbey Tower. Um, I feel like that one's a little bit less worse if you do that one first. All right, so. Shuffle the encounter discard pile and both set aside copies of Rift Seeker into the encounter deck. Let's pull out some Rift Seekers. Where we got them? Where we got them at? Where are Rift Seekers? There they are. Cool. So we're going to shuffle all this back into the encounter deck. What else is going on? Uh, if Agenda 1A has two or fewer Doom on it, that's this one, and it has four Doom on it. It's this one right here. So it's got four Doom on it. So I mark one doubt in my campaign log. Okay. Well, I can do that. Uh, and then, is that it? Yep, that's it. Uh, each monster enemy gets plus one fight now. I gotta remember that. Um, I feel like I've probably, that's probably something that's very easy to forget. And then there's the same text where I can spend clues to play Doom or put Doom on this agenda to draw cards. Neato. All right, well, my encounter card is Aspires of Carcosa. I kind of want to get rid of that. That's kind of not something I love. Um, but I can probably afford the turn to do that, I think. Let's get some Doom on here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, if I Oops, I advanced this. This has no doom on it. Uh, so, honestly, though, hold on. This, these spires count as being on both of these agendas. I'm trying to remember if there's setup text that says when the agendas advance, you don't clear the doom in play. Let's check the book. Um, let's see. Um, nothing there. Keep looking. Um, dual agendas. Doom on cards other than the two agendas count towards the threshold of both. When one agenda advances, Doom on the other agenda is not removed. However, all Doom in play is removed. Okay, cool. So, if I ignore this Spires of Carcosa, which I'm very strongly considering then uh, this agenda will for sure advance but that's okay and then it'll clear the doom so then I don't have to worry about it in the future I think that's probably the way to go uh, it's just going to advance anyway so I don't think this matters that much um, now I could spend one action moving to the church and then one action to like the chapel or something possibly up here too uh, but I'm still looking at this man in the pallid man over here. And I got the this pair of elusives. So I'm actually considering like spending elusive to move over here. I'll move down and try to defeat the man in the pallid mask. And then next turn I'll elusive back over here. And I feel like that's like maximum efficiency of moving around and doing stuff. So uh, let's do it. Let's just let's just say let's just do it. Let's just do it. Uh, elusive. Two resources. Uh, we're gonna warp on over here. It's got to be a revealed location with no enemies, which Grand Rue qualifies. First action, we're gonna move on down to the Port de la Lavasa, and um, I'm gonna second action use. This investigate ability. Location gets plus two shroud for this investigation. So this is a five difficulty test. Um, and let's see here. I am at a one, two to start. If I spend some money, I'm going to be at three. 
uh, with Dark Horse, so it'll be a three on five. I'm thinking about using against all odds here. Um, I could spend two bucks with Streetwise to get a plus three, though. Let's say that I want to use against all odds because it seems fun, right? Uh, so I would be, hypothetically if I did it, I would spend my one remaining resource here along with one from my inheritance. Um, then I would be at one, two, three with Dark Horse, four, five, six with Rise on the Occasion. I'd be six on five. And then I would reveal four tokens with against all odds, four tokens from the Chaos Bank. Uh, alternatively, my second action could be to gain a resource, and then I could put money into Streetwise as well as use against all odds. Um, so then I would be at a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with Rise of the Occasion, and then. Yeah, nine on five with against all odds. That feels like overkill to me. Or I could keep, excuse me, keep the rise of the occasion. Second action, gain a resource. And then third action, investigate. Because with my third action on this turn, what am I going to be doing anyway? I'm going to elusive back, so I'm not going to move. Um, so I think I'm going to do this and hold on to the rise of the occasion. So second action. I'm going to move, or sorry, second action, I'm going to gain this resource. And then last action, I'm going to investigate the Man in the Pallid Mask. It's got a Shroud of five. Uh, so I am going to play against all odds and pump two resources into Streetwise. So I'll be at one, two, three with Dark Horse, four, five, six with Streetwise. I'm a six on five, and I'm going to reveal four tokens because my base skill value is one and the difficulty is five. Oh, I'm sorry, it's choose, wait, reveal additional tokens. So I'm actually revealing five tokens for this test, and I'm one up. Yeah, that seems all right. For two resources, reveal five chaos tokens instead of one. I've got some dark prophecy going on over here, you know? Getting that reference? You, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, let's let's uh, let's shake up this Chaos Bank here. And then I'm just going to pull them out. One up, revealing five tokens. Here we go. Here's one. That's a reveal another. Two. Minus three. Don't like it. There's an auto fail. I don't like that either. A zero and a minus one. Cool. So I'm going to choose to resolve the zero. And all those go back in the bag. Against the odds goes away. I passed, so I've defeated the man in the pallid man, uh, which gives me chasing the stranger six. And I think six chasing the stranger bucks is relevant. I'm pretty sure that's a, a pretty key number. Okay, well, that was a lot of calculations and stuff. At the end of the round, draw a card, gain a resource. Peter, you have arrived. You've joined the party. This is great. Uh, and then I'm going to put the Doom on this agenda because it's going to advance anyway, thanks to Spires of Carcosa. So we're going to advance, which means that this Doom goes away. Get rid of it. Um, Spires of Carcosa gets discarded. Ding, 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 ding. And we're going to flip it. Uh, the tide continues to rise rapidly. We're going swimming! Shuffle the discard pile and both set aside copies of Tidal Terror. Ooh, what's a Tidal Terror? It looks like that is. Okay. Let's uh, throw all that in it. And then what else does it say? Uh, check the current C agenda. It is 3C. Right? What, no, 2C? 2C. Uh, so do not mark any conviction or doubt. Roger that. What do we got over here? Each copy of Ancient Evils gained Surge. Wow, that seems terrible. Oops, shuffle this up, shuffle, 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 shuffle. And my encounter card is an Acolyte. It goes to any uh, empty location. I'm going to put him at the chapel, because that's where I'm going next. 
Um, so I want to be able to just kind of nip that guy in the bud. Um, and now it's my turn. And the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I didn't ready that rabbit's foot yet. First thing I'm going to do is spend two of my inheritance bucks on elusive. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, move to a revealed location with no enemies. All right, that's what I thought. So we're going to warp right on back over to the Abbey Church, kind of like I talked about earlier. And then first action, we're going to enter the Chapel of St. Aubert. And we'll see if this is the right way to go or not. I've got plenty of time on the Doom Clock because I'm playing the Doubt route. Um, and it is Waters Forbidden. And there's a, there's a guy wearing a yellow cloak in the water, and he's all like, Hey! You went in the wrong spot. Princess is in another castle. Go away. Okay. Uh, also, this Acolyte joins me. Hello, Acolyte. Uh, let's... Ooh, you know what? One... In hindsight, if I could be so bold... No, no, no. I don't have enough money for that. Never mind. I was looking at a way to use coup de gras here is what I was looking at. Um, but, I mean, I could just take the attack of opportunity, I guess. Um, I was looking at playing Peter first before I played Coup de Gras, but I spent two resources on the elusive. So again, I'm still kind of broke. Uh, all right, whatever. Let's just, let's just kill this guy with an axe, right? Um, let's see if I spend two resources with a Dark Horse Buck. I'll be at one, two, three, four, five, six on three. Let's check the bag. Ooh, skulls are zeros right now. So what do I want to be? At least one up on this test. Three up would be really good. Six on three is where I would be at, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. You show enough. Um... I'm trying to think if it would be better to... Nah, don't worry about it. Zero. Dead. Done. Donezo. Um, and last action... Let's see, I'm at a three investigate right now. What do we got what do we got cooking on over here? This is where I'm going. Um, it's a two shroud. I'm three on two. I'll take it. Three on two to investigate. Uh oh, reveal another token. Oops, I did that wrong. Uh, I gotta pull out this here for a second. Shuffle that up. Uh, and I have to reveal another token. If I fail, place a doom on each agenda. It's not the end of the world. Zero! I didn't fail. Alright. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. I successfully investigated and I got myself. A clue. That's great. End of the round. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Ah, Lodge Dead says reared its ugly head. Uh, go up to the top. I'll keep a... Oh, wait a second. I know which one is correct now. And the correct one is... It's not the chapel, so it's the Abbey Tower. Which means that I want to... Uh, throw the Doom on the Abbey Tower. Yes, I think that's right, because we'll flip this, and it'll say, okay, things are great. And then I'll have to start, yeah, this will turn into the act deck, and so then I have to start putting Doom here. So this is the way that gives me the most amount of time, pretty much. I don't think it matters necessarily, as long as I'm spreading it out, but uh, that's, I think, what we want to be doing here. So, um, anyway, uh, my encounter card is... A Rift Seeker. It has returned. Okie dokie. I could one-shot this with a flare. That seems kind of fun, right? Starting my turn to get a bunch of monies. And let's uh, let's take a look at that option. I could... Where am I at? I'm down here at the chapel. So... I could... I don't know. I mean... Killing this thing with a flare seems pretty fun. The flare does uh, three damage, which is going to kill this guy in one action. Alternatively, I could attack it 
twice with the fire axe, but I'd be broke then, so I can't pick up any clues. So sure, that sounds fun. Let's do it. Flaring it. Uh, I'm going to spend one of my real resources so Dark Horse is, is engaged. So Flare says fight. You get plus three combat and deal plus two damage for this attack. Exile Flare. Um, so I get one, two, three, four from the Flare. Five from Dark Horse. I'm a five on three. And I want to take a look at the bag here. Five on three is two up, but I really don't want to waste the Exile here. Um, so... Uh, I'm going to commit a rise to the occasion, probably. I mean, I could commit a coup de grace. It would bring me from here to here, right? Because um, I'm one, two, three, four, five with a dark horse, five on three. Yeah. So I'm currently two up. I could commit a coup de grace to go up to here or three with rise to the occasion. Um. Yeah, uh, I think it's probably better to do Rise to the Occasion, right? Because what's going to happen is I would commit the Coup de Gras, and then I would draw the minus 5, and I would feel really bad about myself. So we're going to commit Rise. Uh, because 3 is 2 higher than 1, so I can legally play it. And that puts me at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on 3. Minus 2. That's going to kill it. So we exile the Flare, uh, kill the Rift Seeker. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I suppose I probably could have evaded it in hindsight uh, because it doesn't hunt. I assumed it was a hunter because it's a bioki, but but here we are. Here we are. What can you what can you do at this point? Um, let's exhaust Lola and spend some money to pick up a clue here, uh, which is one reason why I wanted to conserve that money. Uh, second action, we're going to investigate. I'm a one, two, three with Dark Horse. I'm a three on two Shroud, right? Um, yeah, three on two Shroud. Let's do it. Uh-oh, reveal another token. Dang it, I did the same thing again. Come on, Graham. Come on, buddy. Get it together. All right, so we're doing a reveal another token. Shuffle this up. Chugga, chugga, chugga. We got minus one. I did it again. Wow. Chaos Bag is being abnormally friendly to me. Um, so first action was Flare. Second action, I picked up that resource. And third action, we're going to start moving, I think. Right? I got to figure out a way to get rid of Lodge Debts by the end here. But hopefully there's a turn where not a whole lot goes on. Or maybe I can get some some take heart monies and spend a turn building up so that the turn after I can get rid of lodge debts. Anyway, uh, no enemies doing nothing right now, right? Yeah, that appears to be the case. So end of the round, ready Lola, draw a card, gain a resource, go up to the top. Uh, we're gonna add a, oops, sorry. We're gonna add a doom. Oh, you know, I wanna keep my skulls pretty clean. So let's uh, spread out the doom a little bit. And we're going to draw marked by the sign, which is a test to willpower. Or else I take two horror. Um, I don't have Peter down, which would really make this kind of better. Uh, if I pump one with Moxie, I'll be at two. Dark Horse kicks in, I'll be at three on two. Um, to avoid taking two horror, I think I want to do everything that I can. I haven't found my moment of respite yet. So... So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm going to spend a resource on Moxie. I start at one willpower, here's two for Moxie, three for Dark Horse, and uh, I'll be a three on two, wish me luck. Minus four, I failed, okay. So I take two horror, and I am not gonna get rid of Lola just yet. Uh, but I did fail a test, so we're gonna draw with Rabbit's Foot. And we got a close call. Okay, well, it's not the thing that I wanted. <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, all right, so first action, we're going to move to the Gothique. Uh, wait, this is... Sorry, aren't there two versions? No, I, di I, I did. I did randomly choose the one. I can heal two damage here 
which doesn't help. I really want to heal the horror if I could. Speaking of horror, I better get down Peter this turn. So second action, we're going to go ahead and play Peter for three resources off of my inheritance. And then, um, you know what, I think last action, I could move into the Abbey Tower, but honestly, the sooner that I find that moment of respite, the better. So I'm actually going to draw. Oh, all right, well, Lone Wolf, what can you do? Uh, end of the round, we're going to draw a card, gain a resource, Rabbit's Foot readies. Uh, we go up to the top. I'm going to add a Doom here, and we're going to draw Black Stars Rise. I'm going to test four Intellect. Um, did I spend money last turn? Why, why am I still at one resource? I feel like I should have been at two. Um, I don't have that money right now. But last turn, all I did was move Peter, which I used my inheritance money for, and then I drew. So, oh, I was at zero resources, and I went up to one because of the Mythos phase last turn. Okay, so I'm testing four intellect, which I do very much hate. I'd have to take a horror for each point I fail by, but I have Peter down. This is great. Or I can place a Doom if I fail as well. So, um, I think I'm just, I might throw the rabbit's foot at this. I only have the one resource, so I can't pump with Streetwise. Um, so right now I'm just looking at a one, two, and I can't get Dark Horse to kick in. Um, so if I threw the rabbit's foot at it, that would make me a three on four, which is still not amazing, but potentially if I drew a decent token, um, Skulls are minus two right now. If I drew a decent token, I would be at, let's see, three on four, minus two. So I probably am going to take three horror from this, which is a lot. That's so, so a lot of horror. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to try to minimize this as best I can and hope for the best. Uh, hopefully, honestly, because my horror is so bad right now, I got to... Um, uh, keep Peter around, I think. So, let's see. I'm at one, two, and we're going to commit Rabbit's Foot for three. And that's all I got. Three on four. Don't be terrible. Gee dang it. Reveal another. Um, I don't love doing that, you know? Reveal another token. It's minus one! Ah, well, I failed. So, according to the tablet that I drew, uh, I have to put one Doom on each agenda. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, I drew a minus one, so I was at a one, two, three. I was a two on four, so I take two horror, which is just going to go right on Peter. And if I hadn't committed that rabbit's foot, it turns out I would have uh, either had to lose Lola or the Moxie. So, you know, I kind of saved some of my assets by doing that. I feel very validated. This is just swell. Oh, and also I failed the test, so we're going to use a rabbit's foot. Flare. Okay, well, I gained my resources at the start of my turn. Um, I'm still looking for that moment of respite I really need really bad. Um, and I need that moment of respite before I advance. I think before I advance... Uh, this agenda. Uh, well, I don't know why I have to do it before then. I need to find the moment of respite soon. Um, when I do advance that one agenda, I am going to spawn a boss monster. So I need to keep that in mind. Uh, well, let's start with a draw, because that's going to determine what I'm doing with my turn. I might be playing moment of respite. Nope, that's a weakness. That's not what I wanted. Hmm... Second action, let's, um, I'm pretty sure when I move into the Abbey Tower, it's going to say, like, you cannot, uh, you have cards in your hand, and so you can't do anything. Um, so, let's, um, you know what? I'm going to play Lone Wolf, I think. 
I know this is kind of going off script a little bit. I'm going to play Lone Wolf, and then last action, I'm going to gain um, these three resources because I know I'm going to need to get rid of Lodge Debts here at some point. Um, and then my turn, Peter heals a horror. Horton hears a who. Uh, I'm going to refresh everything at the end of the round. Oops, that's not the right button. Draw a card. Um, oh, get out of here. Uh, draw a card. We're going to gain a resource. And then at the top of the round, um, let's uh, advance this here. And these skulls are at threes. All right, and show me something good. Spawn of Halley. That's not great at all. All right, so if you successfully evade Spawn of Halley by two or less, take a horror. Uh, well, I, I get uh, five resources on my family inheritance, which is real neat. Um, I could shuffle this enemy back into the deck if I need to. I'm not sure if I will. Um, I could try to kill it, but I'd have to spend all my money with Fire Axe to do that. So I think evading is my better option and then possibly using Close Call to get rid of this guy if I need to. Um, or I might just move into the Abbey Tower, actually, at that point. Um, cause this guy doesn't hunt, is that right? And uh, another reason why I shouldn't fight this monster is because he's actually a five fight because of this agenda. So we're gonna evade, boys and girls. I got a one. I got a two. I got a three. Uh, we're gonna spend two resources off of my inheritance to be a four, five, six on two. Um, and if I draw a minus two or worse, I will take a horror. Um, let's take a look at that. A minus three. So it'd be nice to get an extra agility icon there. So I'm going to commit the flare to it. So one, two, three, four, five, six with streetwise, seven with flare. I'm a seven on. Two minus one. Oh, you know what? I probably could have saved it because I forgot I had Peter here. All right, well, whatever. Uh, I successfully evaded the spawn. Uh, second action, we're going to go ahead and move into the Abbey Tower so I don't have to deal with the spawn again. Um, it says, Abbey Tower, the path is open. I can only discover clues in the Abbey Tower if I have no cards in my hand. Hot dog. Um... And last action, I could draw for a moment of respite or I could take three resources off of my inheritance. I think I'm going to do that um, because like, if I need to spend resources during the Mythos phase or in reaction to an enemy that I draw or something like that, uh, then I'm still going to be kind of too low on cash, I think, to get rid of the Lodge debt. So we're going to go up to eight by taking all this money here. Um, and I can't use Lola because she discovers clues and I can't discover clues while I have cards in my hand. And I can't discover clues and get rid of the cards in my hand until I get rid of Lodge Debts. So that's pretty important. Uh, end of the round, everything refreshes, including the enemy over here. Oops, I didn't mean to draw him. He just needs to hang out there. Uh, and then we're going to draw a card and gain a resource. The Clasp of the Black Onyx is going to up the cost of all the stuff on my hand, which is maybe kind of annoying. Um, also, I have money for Test of Will, so if I draw something that looks like I'm going to take a billion horror, uh, I can maybe stop that from happening. Top of the round, or top of the, top, top of the mountain. Let's go. Uh, draw an Acolyte. Spawns at an empty location, so it can't be where I'm at, it can't be here. I'm going to spawn him here for the sake of trying to be close to me, but honestly, I'm not going to have the opportunity to go back and kill that Acolyte. That does give me some reprieve from the Onslaught that is the encounter deck. So, first action, I'm going to play Lodge Debts and remove that from the game. It costs 10, so I'm going to use 5 of my Family Inheritance Bucks. And then another two, three, four, five of my actual monies. Uh, and then, you know what? I drew the clasp, so I have to spend an extra resource. Um, 
And then, oh gosh, um, I'm thinking about how this location works best. You can choose to discard cards from your hand um, with this action, but I don't know. It seems it seems like you would want to get down to about two or three cards in your hand. Then your first action is discard the three, and then. Um, your next couple actions are to pick up those clues. Uh, if I discarded all the cards from my hand with my next two actions here, then I would just draw one at the end of the round and I'd still be stuck. Um, I'd still be stuck, yeah. Uh, with Without having enough time to clear the clues. Um, also, you can't choose to discard weaknesses from your hand, so I actually am going to have to get rid of this clasp. Um, let's see, I have two actions left. I could clear the 13th vision, which would be maybe kind of nice, or I could just focus on trying to win here. Um, if I played the clasp, what would my last action be? It would be to draw for a moment of respite, honestly. And you know what? Hmm... I'm just feeling so nervous with almost no sanity left. That's kind of where I'm at. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. i got to get rid of the class sometime anyway, so we're going to draw a card. Uh, it's Peter. And then we're going to play the class of Black Onyx for two. Uh, because its cost is increased by one from its own ability. Okay. End of the round. Draw a card. Still not moment of respite. Did I, like... F lose this thing? Where is this card? It's in the bottom five cards of my deck. That's okay. Gonna go up to four doom here, and we're gonna draw ancient evils, which gains surge. So I'm gonna put the doom here, uh, and it surges into mysterious chanting. Oh, hold on a second. I mean, it does gain Surge, so I'm pretty sure I still draw this. But I got a Doom in play here, right? So when I place the Ancient Evils, it says it can it cause the Agenda deck to advance. So we're going to advance this here. Remove the remainder of this Agenda deck from the game and replace it with the Set Aside Act 3C card. Advance to that card. Okie dokie, I will do that. Um, where is it? Oh, it's still in here. Cool. So um, I advance to this. If each undefeated investigator is at the Abbey Tower and there's no clues at that location, advance. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I've done that. Um, now Ancient Evils gain Surge, so I draw into Mysterious Chanting. Uh, that agenda advanced, so the Doom went away, but then I have to use Mysterious Chanting to put two Doom on this acolyte. And again, I can't get back out there to do anything about it. So there you have it. Get rid of it. And um, I think I'm going to clear the 13th vision. Maybe. I need to find moment of respite so that I can actually start like trying to win here. Or do I just go for It's only two clues. This is this is a little bit silly. Okay, so now that I have advanced the act, or advanced to find the actual act, the one act that I'm going to deal with, um, I need to get no clues at this location, and there's there's only two clues on it, right? So, oh, I have seven cards in my hand though. Okay, well, that means I'm not going to be able to quite get rid of it, huh? Um. So I can spend an action, maybe two actions to clear 13th vision, and then an action to discard a bunch of cards from my hand. Uh, the ones that don't really matter. Um, so that next turn I can discard, discard, and then Lola for a clue, and then investigate the last clue. That seems all right. Um, all right, so clear 13th vision is my first two actions. And the last action, I'm going to discard three cards from my hand and set myself up for glory. Um, oh, hold on a second. 
Hold on a second. Uh, this is going to advance, isn't it? Because this is going to go up to five, and I got the Doom on the Acolyte. So this deck's going to advance. I'm going to spawn a boss monster here. Um, Do I need those cards that I... I mean, I might still just do the same thing, I guess. Um, I do want to get rid of the 13th Vision for sure. My last action, I could draw to try to find that, but I'm not going to be able to... Yeah, I'm fine with this. With how this went. This is fine. Okay. Okie dokie dokie. Alright, so first two actions, clear 13th Vision, last action, discard a bunch of cards. End of the round, draw a card, gain a resource, go up to the top, stroke a lock, that's nice to see. Uh, we This is actually not here anymore, um, so I go up to 5 Doom, plus the 2 that's on the Acolyte here, and we're going to advance. Worlds intertwine. So the set aside Beast of Aldebaran enemy, the Abbey Tower. Wow. That's where I'm at. Alright, so I will get to hang out with this beastie kid. You thought I was going to say boy, didn't you? No. No, I, I, I threw you uh, for a loop. Uh, Ashley Clark is super dead so she's not showing up and advance to agenda 3a we got eight doom left and each copy of ancient evils still has surge which isn't great and i drew a backy which i don't love now i could use close call on the bayaki actually to get rid of it which would be maybe kind of cool um i could well i gained my five resources at the start of my turn uh, and I think I'm going to hammer it on this guy with a couple of fire axe shots, probably. Um, let's see if I can evade this Bayaki and just get rid of it. That seems fine, right? Um, so, I actually, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I want to make sure that I use Dark Horse as much as possible. And to get down to Dark Horse levels, I'm going to actually attack with the fire axe first. So first action. I'm going to spend three of my actual resources to attack the Beast of Aldebaran. We're going to be at one, two with Dark Horse, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on three. Is that really where I need to be at right now? A zero doom. I mean, eight on three is the whole bag. Yeah, I'm going to do it just because I want to get Dark Horse online. Uh, eight on three. Minus five. Boys and girls. This is how it's done. This is how it's done. Yes. All right. So two damage to the beast. Um, second action. Let's evade this swift backy. Uh, I need to leave a couple resources for close call here. So um, let's spend two resources evading. So I'll be at one, two, three. Three, four with Dark Horse. I'm already four on two without spending any Streetwise money. Let's take a look at that for a second. Four on two without spending any Streetwise money. Um, that puts me here. My chances are pretty good. So I'm actually going to commit Stroke of Luck, and that's going to bring me up to here. So chances are great. If I happen to draw one of these tokens, I can exile Stroke of Luck to make sure that I can still keep up the pressure. I like it. So that's what I'm doing. Not even putting any money into Streetwise. We got one, two, three, four with Dark Horse, five with Stroke of Luck. I'm a five on two. Elder Sign. Boom. Um, so this guy gets evaded. We're going to spend two resources on a close call. Uh, he is a non-elite enemy, so he's going to get shuffled back into the encounter deck. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and then I still have an action left. I could evade the Beast of Aldebaran. Um, oh, it's hard to split up the damage and the horror. Um, so yeah, I might actually... Well, if I evade it, though, I'll be at a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on 5. 
Um, and then next turn I could Fire Axe for 4 damage, Fire Axe for 6 damage, Coup de Grave for 7. So, that's just it. If I, um, hmm, I'm going to try to evade it. I think that's the way to go because my evade is already so good. One, two, three, four with Dark Horse. Five, six, seven with Streetwise. And you know what? This is my last action, right? So I'm going to go eight with Moxie. I'll be eight on five. Let's look at our odds. That puts me right here, which is right where I want to be. All right, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Three up. Yes, evaded. Evaded the beast. That's awesome. I'm just going to leave him here uh, for now. All right, end of the round. Or enemy phase, nothing happens, right? So end of the round. Oh, you know what? Did I draw one of those title terrors? No, I'm making that up. I thought I drew a hunter enemy, but I have not, so everything's great. End of the round, everything ready, including the Beast of Aldebaran. I'm going to draw a card, gain a resource, take heart. Seems like a great time for a take heart. I don't have that yet. Um, top of the round, we go up to one doom, and I draw... Ancient Evils, which gains Surge. So this goes up to two Doom, and we're going to draw after that Spires of Carcosa. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. This would put me at four Doom. Next turn, I'd be at five. I could cancel this with Test of Will. But honestly, um, I don't know. That's kind of tough, because it's like, I could, it's basically worth two Doom right now, however, once I kill the Beast of Aldebaran, which would be like next turn, I mean, hopefully by the end of this round I'm going to kill him, um, although I'm kind of hard pressed for that, given my resource situation here, um, I'll commit a coup de grace, I'll be fine. Five, six on three. Yeah. Um, oh, geez. It's just like, do I spend the resource, which I kind of need, to get rid of something that potentially could add up to lose me the game? Or I could spend some actions to reduce it. Honestly, like, as soon as I kill this thing it's one action to investigate and exhaust Lola and then I'm done so I really only need one action with no cards in hand to do this thing um, I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna take the spires um, because I'm nervous about drawing possibly another Ancient Evils, and I would rather cancel that. I mean, maybe I should have just canceled this Ancient Evils. But um, but here we are. And I am I'm, was trying to hold on to this resource. I think it's kind of important right now. So we're fighting the beast, and I want to use Coup de Gras as my last action. So I'm kind of setting aside two resources for the coup. Um, I have four resources to spend, and I have two icons on the coup de gras. So, first action, we're going to attack. Four resources to spend. Coup de gras is sort of like five resources, if you think of it that way. Let's take a look at the bag. Um, we want to be at least two up on this test. Three is a little bit better. And this guy has... Uh, he's actually massive. It doesn't have retaliate. Uh, massive means he's technically not in my threat area, but it doesn't matter because I'm the only dude here. So, all right. So first action, let's spend. Let's be conservative on the first one, and see where the turn takes us. So uh, I'm spending two resources on fire axe. I'll be at one, two with dark horse, three, four, five, six on fire axe. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, six, six on three, that's great. Minus one, all right, this is good. Uh, I'm gonna spend two more resources and that puts me three up, let's be five up, I'm gonna commit a coup de gras. Zero, ah, uh, yeah, that's two more damage. Here, I'll do it anyway, just for the sweet glory. And then last action, I'm gonna spend two off family re uh, family inheritance to play coup de gras, which deals a damage to an enemy at my location. Uh, that's gonna kill the beast, man. Preston, you're hardcore. He doesn't, you know, the coup de gras art has him with a gun, right? But he's using a fire axe for whatever reason. Preston was like volunteer firefighter because Daddy says that you need to do community service or some crap. So he's like just hacking and hacking at this thing and it's super dead and he's just going to town on it he's just like whack 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 then another then another then another hoo ha hoo ha cutting it up anyway uh coup de Gargar draws me a card look at that oh my gosh moment of respite i need you so badly <laughs> please sweet baby jesus uh all right coup de gras is in my discard pile all right we're not out of the woods yet but things are looking pretty good uh, end of my turn. I draw a card. Are you serious? This is the uh, moment of respite's last card of my deck. That's a feeling. That's I, I got a feeling about that. All right, draw a card. Gain a resource. Go up to three doom out of eight. Five with the spires. Let's draw the spawn of Hallie. Son of a gun. Another monster is not really what I wanted to deal with right now. Oh, he engages me. Sorry. Uh, I'm out of close calls. Um, if he attacks me, he's got retaliate. I wonder if I could hack him up twice with a fire axe. That seems all right. Um, let's take a look at the chaos bag real quick. Skulls are at threes, so I definitely want to be three up on each of my tests. He's got a fight of four, so I need to be up to sevens. I would be at one, two, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's three resources a pop. I would spend all my money this turn killing this thing. And if I missed, I would lose a lot of stuff. I'll turn it, but see, I got to get rid of him, right? Because if I evade, then I have to spend an action discarding cards and I still can't investigate yet so I gotta kill uh, evading is not gonna be an option here alright so first action we're going to attack I'm at one uh, sorry I'm spending three resources with fire axe one of my real resources two off my inheritance that puts me at one two three four five six seven eight on four wish me luck minus three that does two damage because I have no resources. Second action, we're going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six with uh, Fire Axe. Seven, Dark Horse, eight, Preston. Minus two, dead. Awesome. Awesome is good. Um, so this guy's dead. Um, last action, do I actually like draw to get the moment? Of respite into my hand. Um, if I did that, I would take a horror for reshuffling my deck, and that would go on Peter, and then Peter would heal the horror right away. Um, if I draw, though, I'll be at six cards in hand. Does that really matter? No. So I am going to draw, which deals me a horror for shuffling my deck. Um, and but I have respite in hand, which is cool. End of the round, I draw a card, gain a resource. Peter heal that horror. Uh, we we'll go up to the top four. Oh, maybe I should have gotten rid of some of this doom. Five, six doom out of eight. There's one more ancient evils in the deck, and I draw crashing floods. I'm going to lose a bunch of actions here if Act or Agenda 3A is in play. So I would lose my entire turn and take three damage if I fail this test. That doesn't feel great. Um, I have a couple icons, several icons really. Um, I could 
pump with moxie or I could just cancel it I think I gotta save the cancel for like an ancient evils effect in case I draw ancient evils next turn and then just straight up lose so I'm gonna commit a bunch of cards I start at one two three I'm gonna spend one with moxie four which is gonna kick up dark horse so I'm a five on three let's check the chaos bag um, I'm a five on three right now and I kind of want to be a seven on three so here's a lone wolf and here's an elusive seven on three don't suck minus one that'll do it cool 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 I passed the test did not lose my whole turn feels good all right so Oh, Moment of Respite's going to draw me a freaking card, though. I should have committed this Moxie, honestly, to that test. I didn't think about it. Because um, I'm going to play Moment first, and that'll bring me back up to four cards. And then i got to wait another turn. Um, honestly, in the interest of... Uh, trying to beat this thing. I'm just going to say I committed the Moxie. Uh, so first action, uh, I play Moment of Respite, which uses uh, three of these five family inheritance resources, uh, which is going to heal me three horror and draw me a card. Finally. Second action. Do I not even have enough money for this? Son of a gun. I don't have enough money for this. Um, that's fine. It's whatever. Whatever. It's fine. Um, I'm trying to decide what how to deal with the stupid spires here, man. I'm at six doom out of eight. I'm right here at the end. Uh, I know that I'm sure that you guys are like seeing some kind of big thing that I can do. Um, I mean, I can. I can't even exhaust Lola to get a clue. Is the problem? Maybe hold on. If I had, if I had committed the Moxie, I could first action discard all my cards, and I would still have all this money. Here, here, here. Okay, here's what I'm doing. First action, discard my whole hand. I know I've been waiting for this stupid moment of respite, but I think this is better. Second action, I'm going to investigate. I'm at a one, two, three, four, five, six with streetwise, six on three. Draw a token, minus one. Yeah, this was this was the way to do it. I didn't need to mess around with moment of respite. As much as I like that card. Uh, so that gave me a clue, and then we're going to exhaust Lola, spend these remaining three family inheritance monies. There it is. There's the line of play. Pick up this clue, and if each undefeated investigator is at the Abbey Tower and there's no clues on that location, advance, which I will. Only you can stop the king in yellow from escaping his prison. You leap into the training maelstrom, kind of like Lady Gaga did at the Super Bowl. Uh, here we go. And enter the realm of madness. Woo! Woo, boy! Uh, I got a little close because of all the uh, the doom effects. I was afraid that we were going to draw another uh, mysterious chanting and have, like, the acolyte and the spires in play and, like, just so much doom. Um, but, yeah, I almost ran out... Um, I played I played that one slow slow burner because I wanted the the doubt. Um, I don't think it's going to matter though. Ultimately, we'll see. All right, so let's talk about experience points real quick. I got the beast, the that that beastie boy. Hey, hey I did it this time. Uh, let's see, I got the outer wall. That's an experience point, and the north tower is also an experience point. Cool. Victory, 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 victory. It's an Abbey Church. Uh, yeah, you're never forgetting that now, huh? 
that I, I just did the victory jingle. Yeah, you're welcome for that as well. That looks like it for locations. So, looks like I got a one, two, three, four, five, six more experience points. How cool is that? Feels great. Um, well, that's pretty much all I got. I mean, thanks for joining me. Uh, we are nearing the end. I'm excited to see how this super Preston crazy dark horse garbage does against the king in yellow. Um, again, if we look at my campaign guide, I've got more conviction than doubt, which I believe means that I have to fight the version of the king in yellow that has the most health. Um, so I'm going to have to kill him probably through a beast of Aldebaran. Um, I might keep my elusives for that reason. Um, ideally, with someone who's so investigation focused, I've got Lola, I'm picking up a clue every round. It would be better to do the doubt route. But um, here we are. That's what I got. Cool. Well, uh, again, thanks for uh, watching and uh, tune in for the grand finale of Unimpressed next time on Unimpressed.